Hey everybody, welcome to Sex is Medicine. I am your host, Miss Davy Ward Erickson, and I am absolutely delighted to be here with you. Once again, we broadcast live the first Thursday of every month, so you can catch us hot and fresh off the press, if you like. <laughs> Um, I'm very excited about our guest this evening. Uh, Tayomi Morgan is how I met you. And how do you say your last name, your new last name, Tayomi? Najib. Najib. Beautiful. And Tayomi is a very dear and precious friend of mine. Uh, we met in December of 2016 at a sacred sexuality event uh, that we were both presenting at. And I remember seeing this woman, this queen and thinking oh my god <laughs> who is this human being who is this like wow spectacular bikini emanation wow. of feminine wisdom um and yeah and we became fast friends um and uh Taomi, uh went through my authentic tantra certification training program and can now add uh, authentic tantra healing to her long list of tools that she has in her toolbox um and yeah so so it's an honor to have you here tayomi because you are tayomi is like like sex educator famous she is uh. absolutely <laughs> like one of the top names top experts in the field of sexuality and i have your amazing bio here some of the many accomplishments that you have um, have done in the field are being a resident expert, resident sex expert for ebony.com and blackdoctor.org. Uh, you hosted your own Playboy radio show. In fact, I remember years ago seeing this beautiful queen on Playboy radio and thinking, damn, who's that? Can I get on your show? <laughs> I was really proud of that too. <laughs> So now you're on my show. Um, being published in uh, Collegiate Academia by McGraw Hill, uh, hosting a two year sold out international tour. Yes, your Exotica tour is amazing, off the hook. Uh, you've been featured on Comedy Central, Tosh.0, uh, Daniel's Favorite Sexpert. Um, your advice has been featured on Huffington Post, New York Magazine, The Cut, Essence.com, Ask.com, Shape.com, Blavity.com, Vice.com. Washington Post. I mean, just the list goes on and on. And weren't you recently featured in the New York Times? I was, yes. So they did a profile on um, polyamorous and open couples in New York City. And my life partner and I were one of them. And it was like a dream come true because I've always wanted to be in the New York Times. And I figured, well, if I'm going to come out as non-monogamous, this is the best way to come out in the New York Times. I mean, <laughs> broadcast it live. <laughs> now i'm out out <laughs> yeah. well but i love how you do that i love how like you are one of the primary sex educators that really like you teach what you live right exactly. and you live what you teach so this is not an intellectual academic exercise though you're extremely intellectual extremely academic very well studied very well trained all of that but it's not just a concept. It's not an intellectual concept. Your sexuality is an expression of your humanity. And so I just so honor and appreciate how like, you know, you are living the life and then people get to learn from what you are doing, what you are modeling to the world in regards to healthy, integrated, open sexual expression. Exactly. And that, you know, has always kind of been my main thing. I'm like, listen, I'm not an academic. I didn't go to school for 10 years studying human sexuality. I picked up books and started reading on my own and started experimenting. I always knew I am a classroom. And so I've always taken my experience as valid. Um, because I've, you know, I have other friends who work in the industry and in the field and everything. And I've had mentors over the course of the last like 10 years of my life in this space and many of them are you know very well studied and you know they've gone and gotten these you know great degrees and everything but i'm like you know they have applauded me for the work that i do because i'm in the field there yeah. is something there is something so rich about actually working with people and talking to people consistently and is experiencing people and putting what you read in a book into actual practice because then you're like oh well when you apply this this is how it actually ends up 
versus the ideal of what this controlled environment is saying in this book. So um, people would always ask me, oh, you know, how do you become a, a sex expert? How do you even get to have this job? And I'm like, how, how do you think? There's only two ways. How do you think? Experience and education, which is both. So I appreciate that you appreciate that about me because some people don't, um, you know, you know how it is in this, in this space. You have people who are the academics and they're very like, um, some of them can be quite pretentious and, and very, um, they, they separate themselves from those who maybe have a lot more world experience, but maybe not the credentials. And so there is like this separatism that happens in our field where it's like the academics against the, the experienced. And so I just like when I'm embraced, I'm like, thank you. I appreciate it because I do a lot of good work in this space and I deserve to be validated, damn it. Well, absolutely. And you bring up an amazing point because there is like, when we say academic, like you are one of the most academic people I know, quite frankly, you're constantly learning, you're constantly reading, you're constantly feeding your mind and, and answering the question of how does this work and why? right so you're not just going to like throw out a technique you're like what is this where does it come from how does it work what are the mechanics like you do your research and so i would simply say that for and myself included you know i'm i'm similar and so so it's simply that we haven't gone through the the traditional or the accepted mainstream hoops to get a degree but my husband has a phd and he says to me often, he's like, you are one of the most intelligent, well-learned human beings I've ever met. You know, you understand more than many people who do have PhDs. And yeah. you just yeah. simply didn't go through the traditional route. And so anyone can read a book. I'm just saying, like, it's right. not that hard to get the academic information. And some of that information that you learn in academia is simply incorrect. It's not correct, Right. I mean, there's conflicting research, there's conflicting studies, not everybody's looking at the same thing. So what I love is the blend of the intellectual understanding, which we can get from reading, but the lived experience, because I really don't care if someone has five PhDs. I want to know, have you gone from having a numb vagina to having a fully multi-orgasmic vagina? And what did you do? How did you get there? And what did it feel like to go through that process? That's how I'm going to trust you if you have a lived experience. So I think that those of us who are in the field, teaching from lived experience, woven with an academic, you know, understanding and, and open to exploring research and intellectual studies and that sort of thing, scientific academic studies, are a prize. It's a win. Yes, it's such a win. And I, the experience part, it enriches me. You know, it starts with me first because I've always said, I don't want to be the type, of, the type of practitioner that's like, okay, I'm going to teach somebody or write an article and say, oh, five tips to do whatever, but I've never experienced that. And so I always believe iron sharpens iron, you know, for kink. You know, I was like, I don't just want to delve into this world and possibly hurt myself. I need to have some guides. So I have kink coaches mm -hmm. who help me navigate my kinks and fetishes. And then in turn, I can educate my audience about it. And just like with Tantra, you know, I had been searching for years for a Tantra teacher. I started studying Taoism on my own, which really resonated with me and stuck with me. And then I found you. And as soon as I found you, I was like, this is my teacher. I've been searching for her for all these years. And so to be an authentic Tantra practitioner, it's just iron sharpening iron. It's like taking on this, this knowledge that really was already within me. Because as soon as I, I remember the first practice that we did at that retreat, it just stuck with me. I was like, I think I'm supposed to be doing this. This just feels really natural to me. And it's just amazing how just even doing the practice for myself, because I've been slowly, you know, moving out into the world with authentic Tantra because my, I, I know my audience mm -hmm. and my audience is, um, they're still kind of like on the basic level, just on pleasure mechanics and like communicating what they need. And so with Tantra, I have to go slowly, gently with mm -hmm. them. Um, so I've been doing a lot of self and solo practice and just seeing how it's shifted my energy seeing how it shifted my entire life like it's it's been amazing and people would just come to me like 
what what is this source like what is this energy that you're carrying and i'm like oh, you don't even know what you're looking at right now you're looking at the buddha <laughs> And that says a lot, because when I first met you, you were a radiant sun. So, I mean, you're like a supernova at this point. Yeah. So, exactly. how did you get into the field of sexuality? Because you're a former model. For those of you who don't know, you were on America's Next Top, top Model. Tyomi's like six feet tall. She's stunning. <laughs> Glamazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's me. It's so crazy, because I feel like I've lived multiple lives, you know. I... I was working in entertainment as a journalist and also as a model. So I was just a freelancer, kind of having my hands in everything, entertainment and beauty. And my modeling career kind of took a shift after America's Next Top Model because like my whole everything was like sunk into this show. But my dad pulled me to the side and he was just like, you know, you are such a talented writer. You should be using your writing. I don't care what you write about, but you need to use this gift. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, this was like 2010, blogging was a big deal. I remember that. Um, so I was like, okay, I want to start a blog. And I start thinking, all right, where can I best serve? You know, mm -hmm. um, the beauty industry was starting to kind of like take another turn towards influencers. And I, I, I thought I wanted to go in that route, but I was like, you know what? I don't feel like that's substantial enough. And so I just started searching my mind about what I knew a lot about and could actually be very helpful to the world doing. And I was like, oh, sex. Mm -hmm. And when I started researching, I did not see the, the climate is completely changed now. And I like to think that I have something to do with that. Um, but at the time, 2009, 2010, there weren't black girls talking about sex, preaching about sex, or even speaking about it in a way that was not just like, advocating for girls to live their best whole life because there was a lot of those at the time um but black women who were like hey it's okay to be open sexually and it's okay to also wanting to be like kind of private with your sexuality but still able to express yourself and be you know completely open with what you want and your desires black people black women specifically talking to black women i was like let me just jump in here and take a stab at it and i started my blog in 2011 glamorotica101.com and um it's it blew up i did not expect for the blog to just like because everybody had knew me as this model and like she's really kind of quiet and so when i came out with the blog everybody who knew me in like chicago and stuff was just like where is this coming from and i started getting press right away I, I remember doing one of my first podcasts like a month into me blogging and it was a friend of mine who had a radio show and it just took off from there. And then I started working with the Exotica Expo. Mm. Um, they were the first platform to give me a chance to speak publicly. And so now I actually work for the company as their residence expert and seminar coordinator. I'm going on my fourth year of putting together the show's educational content. So really I'm responsible for 50% of the show because it's a half of our draw. But I just saw a need. I just saw that Black women needed a champion. Mm -hmm. And I speak to everybody and anybody who will listen. Um, I'm not going to say that, oh, you know, my advice is not for people who aren't Black. Um, but I make it very clear and known that I'm here to stand as a representation for Black women and Black people um, because the way that we're portrayed sexually, you know, in media and just visually, it's not always, um, it doesn't always champion us mm -hmm. or encourage us to mm -hmm. uh, express ourselves in a beautiful way. It's always kind of like quite toxic or like fetishized. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that it was going to be, um, it wasn't going to be easy because there was not a paved road. It wasn't like there was a blueprint for this mm -hmm. where I could look and say, oh, this did it before me and there there have been you know sex therapists black sex therapists or whatever that have come before me but in this new age in the way that i present information like i'm a blogger i'm a youtuber i also have a youtube channel that's an association with my blog and so the way that i choose to put information out there is coupled with humor mm -hmm. and education because mm -hmm. one of my mentors told me early on if you can keep them laughing you can keep them engaged and humor helps to kind of like soften the topic a little bit so I like to show people that, hey, this is something that's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. And don't take yourself so seriously. You know, things are going to happen. Things might not always turn out the way you want them to turn out. 
based on your fantasies. But as long as you're at least trying, you know, that's enough. So I, um, it's been a wonderful journey, eight years in, and uh, I'm looking forward to basically revamping my whole platform because I've been working for everyone else, mm-hmm. just kind of like building my name up. You saw all the, the credentials early on, like, yeah. Partnering with other people, wanting to get my name out there more, but I kind of abandoned my baby a little bit. So this year I'm getting back to Glamorotica 101, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. Yay. Awesome. So, so you're, you like, you're one of the, the leaders in the industry who's really paved the way for this new generation and this new approach to sex education, which is this beautiful blend of information, but actually, again, really having an embodied experience of what you teach and being able to present it in a way that's practical and accessible. Exactly. So, what are some of the, the core issues that you uh, encounter in the community that you interact with? Like, what are some of the common themes that you hear over and over and over again from, from people of all genders? I'm going to say the first thing is just trauma. Yeah. Um, and trauma in many different ways. Like, even just last night, me hanging out with friends and having casual conversation about what I do and them opening up to me. There's a lot of trauma from past experiences, you know, where people are being shut down and shut out of really, you know, being able to express themselves. And there's just a lack of knowledge in general. What I see generally is a very, very, very basic level of understanding when it comes to sexual expression. um, And the desire is there, but people don't have a full spectrum of what's possible. And then they don't even know how to really express that or communicate that to to their partners. But they don't even just have the vocabulary or just the words to be able to know what it is that they're experiencing for themselves. So it's really layered. And as a practitioner, from day one since I started this, I'm like, you know, I don't think that it's healthy for me to just, even though I can, because I read between the lines with people when they come to me for advice and stuff, and I listen to what they're saying. And they may be saying, oh, I want to learn a technique to impress my partner or to be better at bed. But the technique is like the very last thing. I'm like, what led up to this? What is the underlying cause of why you feel like you don't know what you're doing or you feel uncomfortable? We have to go back underneath. And so uh, I feel in, in my experience, what I have seen is when it's time to go deeper and dig and pull back the layers, people don't wanna do the work because it's not fun because they have to go in and really like touch in on some places that may still be, you know, fresh wounds Mm -hmm. or something that they don't have the emotional capacity to really um, allow themselves to experience and, and free. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself having to hold a lot of space and say, okay, how can I give them, how can I give these people what they want, but still be integritous in my work? Yeah. and not invalidate their requests yeah but still give them what they need and so i i like to start with just the basics of okay let's check in with self let's be mindful mm. and that was a conversation last night mindfulness yeah. we're so often encouraged to be mindful within our sexual practice our sexual expression it's just supposed to be this spontaneous thing you know, this thing that just pops up and then all of a sudden you have all the powers to do all of the things. And I'm like, this is not how it happens, guys. Psychic download. I know how to press the button and make her come. Exactly. I'm like, it's not that easy. And the desire is there, but this just like anything, like writing, like doing math, like riding a bike, like cooking. This is a skill. When it comes down to the actual technical part, it is a skill. And so if you're only thinking about it, And this is very common too. People only think about sex when it's time to have it. (laughs) That's part of our trauma. Yeah. You're not even talking about it. This is supposed to be your partner. Somebody you sleep next to. And and I see this with couples all the time. Somebody who you're sleeping next to day in and day out. And you don't even talk about sex. But when you're ready, you do some weird like song and dance 
that can get kind of old after a while. And it's like, all right, this is why you're not spicing it up because you're so used to starting sex off the same way consistently, but you're not really talking about it or even planning out what you're going to do. And so um, the traumas from, you know, failed past experiences or um, being shamed or shut out in past experiences or judged negatively so many things are impacting people's abilities to first connect with themselves and then to be able to open up and then connect with their partners. And so we, st I have to start there yeah, every yeah. single time I have to start there. And I'm very patient with people because people will come to me and say, Oh, I'm ready to do this. And then when I start sending them questions, it's like crickets, 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 crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Oh, you thought, I was just going to sit with some toys and be like, all right, let's do this thing. Like, nope, we need to get down to the root first. Yeah. As a practitioner, it is not my goal to have you dependent on me like a baby on the titty. Yeah. Amen. It's my job to give you the tools to help yourself. So that way you can become a full embodied and independent person who can you know, make their own informed decisions. And you just come back to me for supplemental support, but I'm not the person that's doing the work for you or just trying to like, I, I spoon feed, not because I want you to be dependent on me. I spoon feed so that you can, you know, go slowly. And just, yes. People don't like, like Debbie, living this life and being this way is so different because like, when I make a statement on Twitter and you've seen it, right? I'll make a statement and it'll blow up because people cannot believe that these things are true that I'm experiencing. But I'm like, my sexual potency is not like mere mortals. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Yeah. It's, it's, I it's put a lot of energy. I can say that to you and you understand and you know what I'm talking about and you know that it's true. And so I have to dial back a lot because I have to remember that like I have years of practice in being free. And so people look at me like a guiding light as that place where they want to be. It's like, oh my God, tell me your goals. And then I'll say something as simple, like just talk about it. Right. But then I have to dial back and remember, wait a minute, the average person who I'm saying, just talk about it to doesn't have the vocabulary or even the practice. And so there is a fear there of even just being able to say, let's have sex now. Just plain and simple. So <laughs> that, that part of like helping them heal the past perceptions and the past traumas, and then come back to the present and say, okay, now let's be mindful of where we are right now. What do you want? It's, um, it's a journey. And you would think that it would be easy no, well, because we can't force them. Exactly. Well, and that's never easy because I love the point that you made. It's so multifaceted and multi-layered. And at the root is the pain of our disconnection from our own bodies that we've learned from the time we were born and then living, growing up in a culture that shames and, and guilts and represses and all those other words, but it becomes this like brick wall, this heavy burden that we carry. And absolutely, uh, uh, it can be terrifying to begin to examine it. One of, the, one of the things we teach in Tantra is the healing process for trauma, which is numb to yeah. pain, to irritation, to function. So when you're not looking at your sexuality or your trauma or anything, you're numb. You're not. And then the moment you turn your attention to it, it's really uncomfortable. But we have to be willing to go through that discomfort to get to the other side, to get to what's possible. But that's the thing. Like when for a lay person who isn't as experienced, when we first start to examine and we feel all that discomfort, it's terrifying because yeah. we don't understand. We don't have the language. We don't have the knowledge or the awareness that, that it's something that we just have to move through. It's not the end and be all, it's just a sim it's actually a symptom of healing. That discomfort that we feel is a symptom of healing. So I love how skillful you are in, in being able to like to bridge that gap between sexual mastery and excellence and you know and continuing to cultivate, right? Mastery doesn't mean you stop, it just means right. that the game's a little bit different. To being able to distill 
and then deliver medicine, de deliver information, deliver healing for people in a way that makes it really accessible to where they're at in the moment. Exactly. And it's such a challenge for me too, because I have a very big following and I have a lot of demand. A lot of people are screaming at me all the time for help. And so I've been working on creating platforms and programs and things that make it easier for me because it's like, it's not like the information that I have is something brand new, but it's the way that I present it that people mm -hmm. really resonate with. And so for me to deliver the medicine in the format that I do, I'm like, okay, how can I give of myself without overextending or overexerting myself? Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of space that I'm in right now. Like I have this app in development, which I'm, I'm designing it to be a like catch all place for people who want coaching and then really pushing my Tantra, um, my, my, my Tantra studies and my Tantra programs out there. And because that, that piece is so, it's so precious and it's so intricate. And I'm like, if you are ready to take this journey, you have to invest in um, time, money, energy, because it's going to change your life. And like the fact that I practice and that I study and that I, I actually put, I put my actions behind my words. I'm like, mm -hmm. I am a product of my teaching first. Yes. There so you go. Don't believe in what I'm saying. Just look at me, just look at me and take a moment to just like breathe me in and feel me. And if you can feel what I feel, which is all this goodness radiating, radiating from me, then you must know that I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. And so, because people get really apprehensive and I understand because it's that pain point. Yeah. That pain point that you run into is like that big scary monster. And I feel blessed because I, I feel like I've developed such a deep sense of like emotional maturity that I'm able to move through those hard things now and observation and ease and with so much compassion. And now I can like assist people with doing that even more deeply because it's, it's the flowing through part that I think people misunderstand. Yeah. They look at the pain and they think, Oh man, I have to relive this again. And they don't think that there is something beyond that, but there is, you have to process. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're going to heal without processing. And I'm going to tell you, Debbie, the, the, the proof of my emotional processing is my belly. My belly is so small now because I've done so much emotional unpacking mm. and I've allowed myself to just deeply, like deeply really feel into these past things that I didn't even know were buried and it's crazy. I'm like, ooh, I got V cuts coming. Like, what is this? What is this like? I never knew I could I could have a belly that has some definition to it, you know. But being able to do that myself, and then be transparent enough to communicate that to my community and say, hey guys, listen, I've been going through some emotional shit, <laughs> and and this is what it stems from childhood trauma but this is where I'm at now on the other side of it and this is what it looks like now it gives people courage to say you know what if Tayomi can do it and she's still here and she's still standing and she's living her best life I can do this too where do I sign up yes so yes yeah a living breathing example and I love the tangible tangible results like such a clear example of how when we process and heal those emotions the body doesn't need to store them in different places the body doesn't need to hold on to them because we hear their message their message is delivered because that's what they are messengers yes. and then we can set them free and then we get to be integrated and whole and healed uh, I just want to thank you because man, you coming into my life and me like just having the openness to even integrate Tantra into my life. It literally, I've been looking for this my whole life and it is a part of me now. Like uh, the first thing I think to do when anything is arising in my life. All right, let's do 21 breaths. All right. Color breathing. All right. Let's just go into meditation. Let's go into this subspace. And I go deep. Like sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, I can live in this forever, yeah. you know, um, but iron sharpening iron, you know, I'm going to always be learning from you, from my colleagues, and I'm not the type of practitioner that's like, 
I'm the end all be all, know all guru. You know, nothing is beyond me. I'm like, look, sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I misspeak. Sometimes I say things that may not 100% be accurate. And that's just the humanness in me, you know, and I can own up to that and admit that. But what I will always say is I'm always moving forward towards what more can I add in my skill set to help people? Exactly. A life of service, an orientation to service. So, so in that realm, let's talk about your pleasure mechanics, because that's the way you break things down and distill it for people to make it accessible for people that aren't as don't have 11 years or 10 years of practice under their belt. So, so describe the pleasure mechanics and, and how that unfolds and what that means. So for the longest time, I was like, what do I do? Because people would always ask me, like, what do you do? And I started to really think about like, okay, what is my specialty? And I'm like, I'm really hands on with the things that you do to make sex fun, to make sex pleasurable. And so I call them pleasure mechanics because it's literally how you apply the things that you read about in your situations to bring about pleasure. And um, none of this stuff is straightforward. One of the main things that I teach is I teach women how to stroke. We call it riding, you know, riding the D. Um, but I like to reframe it. You can cuss on my show, just so you know. Okay, well, riding the dick. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be real. It's it hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yo, how far can I go? Because go all the way. <laughs> riding the dick. So, um... <laughs> Wow, it's just so interesting to me because women all over the world who are lovers of dick are like, listen, I love this man. I love this. I just don't know what to do with it when he asks me to get on top. And all the questions were always so funny to me because I felt their pain. And <laughs> the very first time I ever had, like, so I started having sex, partnered sex at 19. And the third partner that I had put me on top of him and he's like, okay, I want you to ride me. And I raised my hand like, sir, excuse me. I just got in the game like last week. So I really don't know what I'm doing. And he's like, we'll just try anyway. And it was a horrible fail. And he was just like, you know what, doggy style, we, we, we're good. But I, was, I felt so embarrassed and defeated at that time. I was like, oh, hell. I will not let any skills throw me off or take me out of the game so i started studying and what i noticed was that there really isn't any like literature or anything out there teaching the mechanics of how i did and so i made these videos and they have since gone viral several times all over the world and women were like oh tayomi this is great and men were like thank you tayomi for teaching this this is great but then there were so many women who were still like, okay, I see this video, I get it, but I still don't get it. I still don't know what I'm doing. And so one of my friends pushed me off a ledge and booked me to teach a class in person in Chicago back in 2016, and it turned to a tour. Yeah. So I've been touring the world, basically teaching movement. This is what it is. I teach women movement and I teach women how to strengthen their core and their lower bodies. And I also teach them how to strengthen their confidence in taking control. And I help them reframe this idea of what this is. This is not, you're not riding a pony. You're not doing tricks for him. Okay. You're stroking him. All, see, <laughs> in heteronormative relationships or heterosexual relationships where it's man, woman, the man's doing most of the stroking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is actually quite selfish. I, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy it. But it's crazy, especially for those of us that like to go for 30 minutes or more. We're expecting him to stroke for damn near 50, 55 minutes. Okay. But uh -huh. when it's our turn to get a little stroking in with uh, huff puff, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> it's a chore. It's a chore. <laughs> it's all about leverage, Tyomi. That's what it is. It's all about leverage. <laughs> That's the main thing I teach in my class. I'm like, listen, you have to leverage your weight. If you leverage your weight and you know how to isolate your hips and you have a rhythm, that's all you need. And you don't have to be up there for 10, 20 to 15 minutes. No, just five. I train my ladies. I say, listen, I'm training you to be a finisher. 
okay? This is a finishing move. Don't let him trick you into putting you on top in the beginning because this will not be a finishing move this will be a marathon race and you will be upset you got to get him when he's at a seven when he's at a seven then you get on top and you finish him okay this is like a mortal combat ko so i <laughs> so not good for semen retention this is the anti-semen retention move no it's the anti-semen retention move unless see so so me in my sexual prowess you know <laughs> i have had partners who practice semen retention and i like to ride so i can ride for 10 15 20 minutes i'm great i have stamina but it's like women women are weak uh structurally with their bodies and then they just don't know what it's for i'm like listen this is this is going to benefit him but it's really for you first because you get to control your stroke you get mm -hmm. to control how you want to be stroked and you get to take control of the speed and everything but you have to realize you're not getting up there riding a pony this is not the mechanical bull at your favorite local bar you know this is uh this is something that is coming in and out of you you have to feel the stroke mm -hmm. so when you take over the stroke you have to have the confidence to be able to give instructions because changing his body changing the angle of his body and then knowing how to leverage your weight is essential and so i teach all bodies mm -hmm. large bodies small bodies slim bodies thick bodies and i've taught women from ages 18 to 65 okay? okay and so it's been such a beautiful experience because this is one of the things that i feel um there is literally no literature on it i'm writing a book right now um to put it out here into the world but there really is no book on teaching women the mechanics of how to uh, increase their stamina and be pleasurable when it's time for them to do the stroking and so this has been the one thing that has really fueled my career in the last four mm -hmm. years is helping women master this form of pleasure mechanics mm -hmm. and then on top of that i teach them breathing and we do a little bit of yoni yoga so my class when i teach it is a, a gambit of like a bunch of different things yeah. and if you want to come to me later and work on things individually we can but again all this stuff is so layered mm -hmm. and when these women do come to me my class is like two hours so i have to put all this stuff in to two hours um without overwhelming them yeah they always have a great time and they always see an improvement in their stroke and that's how I know I'm doing a good job when they write me back and say, Tayomi, it works. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's, I just want to say it's so brilliant having the, the riding towards the end or, or at least, you know, however long into the session because of that engorgement, right? Of the internal female erectile tissue. So 10 minutes in, you're not going to have you may i don't know what your vagina is like you may or may not have lots of sensation but you're going to have like way more sensation 20 minutes in 30 minutes in 40 minutes in so then you'll actually really be able to feel the stroke as opposed to starting off you may not feel much of anything because you don't even have a full erection exactly you're you're very you're you're asleep still yeah you know? your body is still trying to warm up so i always educate my ladies and say listen you don't get on top until you're both at a seven yeah. you need fully engorged and open so that way you know you're not experiencing tightness you're not experiencing dryness you're not experiencing these things that are going to impact your ability to be able to stroke properly and so <laughs> i'm sorry my cousin is being weird just go just go <laughs> i had somebody else in the room and she's like <laughs> slinking her way underneath rock <laughs> All I see is a face like pop up next to me. I'm like, just go. <laughs> oh my God. Live radio. <laughs> so, um, you know, with, so with women, it's like teaching them how to feel empowered and taking control, advocating for what they want, speaking up, and then moving things out of the traditional space, you know, when we see these visuals of women riding on top, it's always like just in a bed. And I'm like, listen, you have to do what's right for your body type and your knees. Okay. And where you <laughs> so sometimes that traditional straddling position may not work for you. You might have to take it to the couch or you might have to take it to a chair or to the edge of the bed, you know, or he might have to like raise his pelvis up. He may need to play an assist, you know, the Scotty Pippen to Michael Jordan. I mean, come on. This is not, I always say too, listen, I know your partners are like, yeah, 
this is my chance to like lay back and chill. This is not a chill time, my guys. Supposed to be a chill <laughs> you know, like you, this is drill sergeant time. Now it's time for me to take over, but you are not going to just lay there, you know, and be a pillow prince. You know, this is your time to actually assist me <laughs> with the stroke. And so women leave my class just like, wow, this was such great value for what I paid. And this year I'm producing some DVDs because I want them to continue to practice after yes. without having to do it with me. Because the way my schedule is set up, Debbie, you just know, like I'm in film school right now, full-time practitioner. I run my own business. And so I'm all over the place. And I'm like, I can't always do things live with people every single day. It's a lot. It's very demanding. Um, and then with pleasure mechanics in working with men, it's been so interesting because on top of me having this deep desire to work with them, it's also me healing like deep wounding at the same time at the hands of like male partners from the past. And it's, it's been such an interesting space for me to be in because I have like, I'm always faced with, okay, um, here's a trigger. <laughs> I'm being triggered. All right. How much, how much energy can I put into this before I'm like, all right, I have to shut it down and go and do some processing for myself before I can move on and help you um, in this space. And I think that as practitioners, it's really important for us to know that it's really important for us to know our limits and when we have to tap out and say, okay, not right now. I'll get back to this once I've, you know, done some clearing for myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a huge, huge topic. And yeah. And I love, I love that you say that because that's really bringing in what we call the trauma informed approach. So it's one thing to be trauma informed about your, your, your wonderful clients and then the people who are coming to us for help. It's another thing, another added layer to be trauma informed about ourselves and being exactly. willing to be mindful of, Oh, my trauma is being triggered because a lot of us do have a history of trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And it, we are going to get triggered sometimes in some interactions. So it's really um, mature. Um, and compassionate to be able to recognize that. And, and, and I love too, I found that, um, that after going through a period of really addressing my sexual, the violations, sexual violations I experienced as a child at the hands of, of a male um, family member and, and really processing and healing that, coming out the other side of that, it is so soul enriching to, yes, to work with lingam owners as well as yoni owners to just you know and 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 to I, I have so much compassion and it's it's really restored my faith in humanity because yeah. so many of these wonderful lingam owners men cisgender men are seeking this knowledge and these tools yeah. and these methods and it's so beautiful to see how so many of them who do make our way to us are really yearning for deeper connection and love and intimacy with their partners and they want to bring pleasure. And that's actually what helps them feel like a man, right? That's what helps them feel empowered is to be able to, to control their ejaculatory response, have mastery over their sexual energy and be able to give really profound pleasure to their female partners. Like that's so beautiful. And to be, be a woman who has the opportunity to play a role in that I just like, to me, that's the union that we seek on this planet, the union of the masculine and feminine, the union of these seemingly opposing energies that are designed to dance in eternal union, right? And we can't do it when there's unprocessed pain, but when we can be responsible for processing our pain, then we get to be available to humanity in a whole new powerful way. So it's just so beautiful, such a beautiful example of that. Oh, man, like... I see it all the time in this space because there's so many people now teaching and so many people coming out and just like starting their businesses. And, you know, as an empath person, as a, an intuitive person, I'm always reading between the lines. It's just a gift yeah. that I've always had. And I can hear people's trauma sometimes seeping through their posts or seeping through their work. And I cringe. I'm like, ooh, ooh that could be dangerous you know so i'm not i'm not the police you know what i mean like i'm not <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> not the uh, police of you know things in this space because that can get kind of tricky and very sensitive. Um, um, so I'm not the kind of person to be like, I'm going to check you. But at the same time, I kind of just send loving energy and I'm like, you know what, maybe it'll come up for them and they'll see if this is something they need to work on, but it's not my place for me to give unsolicited advice, um, or to try to, um, you know, correct someone when my opinion was not asked for. So I look at that as a mirror. I'm like, okay, I'm looking at this person and I'm seeing how their triggers coming up and and like integrating into their work can be harmful so let me take that as an example for myself mm -hmm. and work on myself so that i don't end up doing the same thing and um you know it's been a challenge to sit in a space and just like mind my business like <laughs> because i um i'm always so willing to just give a helping hand but then i realized like well if it hasn't been solicited, it really is not proper. You shouldn't just be dumping on people, even if it is something that could be helpful. And so um, being trauma informed is so important. But, you know, I always tell people with pleasure mechanics specifically, I'm like, listen, it's just like riding a bike. You know, if you go years without riding it, you're going to hop back on. You're going to be a little rusty, a little shaky. It's the same thing with the application of pleasurable things. And the first thing people can do, even if they're not, you know, a lot of people always say, oh, I don't have a partner. I'm like, well, you know, your first partner is yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do, they're with you all the time. <laughs> right, I'm like, start there. And that's what I'm doing more of this year too, is dating myself and treating myself. So I'm treating myself to a beautiful tantric experience on the beach. Uh, next month in Miami, I'll send you pictures. Yes, please do. <laughs> but starting with self and starting with sensuality. And so this is, uh, I, I like to put sensuality in tandem with pleasure mechanics because I feel like sensuality is the base. Yeah. And people conflate sexuality and sensuality and don't really know the difference between the two. And I'm like, sensuality has, has a is a portion of it that has something to do with sex, but in itself, it's about your senses mm -hmm. and about getting reacclimated to and connected with the world around you through your senses. Like people always ask me, Tayomi, what turns you on? And I'm like, everything. <laughs> I love that. Why? Because I am so connected to my senses and it's easy for me to go into a subspace. It's easy for me to just clear everybody out of the space. And it's just me and my body and God and whatever I'm experiencing through my body at the time. And so I'm like, if we can start with the senses, it can take you on a deeper journey into connecting with self and then getting to the sexual part. But if you can't even sit and allow the sun to shine on you and really enrich your cells and warm up your blood how can you even say you can connect in the sexual experience with somebody who's about to tap into your central channel yeah you can't even allow a cool breeze to come through and let goosebumps raise on your skin and you really feel the sensation of that and the changes in your body but you want to be deeply connected in sex where you're having this god realm sex yeah. it's really not possible for you to get to that level um, consciously because people have these glimpses of enlightenment in their sexual experiences where it's tantric and they're like, wow, it was such a great experience. I'm trying to get back there. And I'm like, you can be there every single time if you're mindful and conscious, but that first begins with you being in tune with your senses. Wow. And we don't even realize just how much we block our senses out because of trauma. Yeah. So we're not breathing correctly we're barely even really absorbing and taking in what we're seeing through our eyes we're not really listening because we're only listening for the parts that we want to hear so that we can insert or exert ourselves mm -hmm. and then um we're not even truly smelling <laughs> we're just like everything that we do in life is just kind of like a glaze over yeah. so we're not even deeply in tune with our senses and so i'm like let's just breathe first and then when you breathe, really be aware of what that breath is doing when it comes into your body. Where is the breath moving to? Where does it want to flow to? 
starting there and helping people just get in tune with the senses is so powerful because then when it comes to the mechanics, the things that we apply to the body, it's like, okay, now can you feel those light touches? Can you really feel them warming you up? Because it's like trying to jump in a car. It's like trying to jump in a car and it's expecting it to blast out warm air right when you turn it on and like five degrees. You're from Detroit, so you know what it's like. <laughs> you know, when it's, yo, that doesn't, doesn't happen. You have to let the car warm up first mm-hmm. you know what I mean? before you can actually experience the heat. But people are kind of working backwards. They want this enlightenment, but they don't want to get in touch or in tune. They with just the want body. To, with the body. They just want to go straight to the fun stuff. Ooh, let's play with the toys. It's like, yeah, but you know, if your hand is like basically paralyzed, how can you how can you grip? You know, yeah. like. We need, to, we need to get the hand back working first so then we can grip the toys and do, and do what we want with them. And so, man, like sometimes I feel like, wow, I have so much, so much to show and teach people. And I'm always feeling like, am I doing enough? But then when I start talking about this stuff, I'm like, you know what? Yes, I'm doing enough. And this level right here is a lot for yeah. people to just deal with. And so, you know, I, I deal with the average lay person, the average person who's just like, you know, nine to five again, and they're just trying to make ends meet, just moving throughout the world, just trying to survive. Maybe they have never gone to therapy. Maybe they don't even realize that they're traumatized because they're just so numb to it all. And so everybody has like an ideal, you know, an ideal client or an ideal, um, you know, person that they want to work with. But the average person is coming with such a basic novice level of just of self awareness mm-hmm. that it's like you can't even teach the sex stuff yet. Yeah. You just really have to teach just the the basics of just like human connection. Yeah. You start there and then you just build on top of it. Well, and I love the the point that I'm hearing th- throughout this thread or the thread that I'm hearing that keeps arising throughout this conversation is how our sexuality is really a path of, of self-growth or personal growth, whether we're aware of it or not, because it's a homecoming. Because yes, it it's been our connection to our bodies and our senses has been robbed. It has been stolen from us. And so first we have to come back from ground zero, come back to ground zero. And then from there we can build. And like you just described so beautifully, like the first step is just being present to our five senses. You can't, we can't have these epic orgasmic experiences if we're shut down and armored and numb and we can't smell or see or taste or even feel anything. So Mm. that homecoming, that journey of homecoming is, is crucial to the evolution into these like, you know, sexual gods and goddesses and queens and kings and buddhas and whatever yeah so so how can people get a hold of you unfortunately we're, we're running coming to the end of the show and it sounds like you have a lot of wonderful stuff coming up uh, exotica shows and tour dates for your ride em cowboys and so what's happening and where can people find out more and start to work with you and 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 start building on these pleasure mechanics it's so much stuff coming and I'm super excited for those of you that are just finding out about me because the journey is just beginning. You can find me on Instagram at real, R-E-A-L, Glamazon Tayomi, and on Twitter at Glamazon Tayomi. Check out my blog site, Glamorotica101.com and its accompanying YouTube channel, Glamorotica101. If you put Tayomi in Google, you will find everything. I have high SEO. I have built it up over the last 10 years. So if you put Tayomi or Glamazon Tayomi in Google, you can find everything. I'm updating my sexpert website, sexperttayomi.com, that will have all of my coaching opportunities and classes. Um, and you can book me from there. So I'm hoping that by the beginning of spring, so like the end of March, all those updates will be available. And I have an app crossing my fingers that it is going to be launched at the beginning of spring, but that will be the place where you all can just experience the coaching at an affordable price. If you have Netflix, it's cheaper than Netflix, Um, but it's going to be a a monthly subscription, but it's going to be the place where you can find all of my coaching styles 
and it's going to be so valuable for the amount of money that you're going to be paying a month. It's going to give you so much value. You're going to be like, wow, I really should be paying more for this. But I just want people to not use the reason of I don't have enough disposable income as the reason why they cannot enrich their sexuality. And so this is, this is something I'm creating for the masses to be able to afford sex therapy in a way that is relatable, easy digest, easily digestible, and easily accessible yeah. through your mobile phone. Yeah. And I will be at the Exotica Expo all year. We're touring four cities, Chicago, Miami, Edison, New Jersey, and a fourth city that's going to be announced soon. Like I said, I'm the resident sex expert and seminar coordinator. So I bring in all of the educators from around the country to teach over 50 classes every single day over a three day event. And um, it's unlike anything you've ever seen. I'm just going to say that the show has an entertainment and education piece and you just have to come there and see it for yourself. And if you are a woman who likes to ride dick, yes. <laughs> Or you want to learn how to do it better? Come to my cowgirl workout. This workshop is for women only, so there are no penises in the room. It's a time of sisterhood. Everyone who leaves my class will have a certification in being an official rider. And I already have a few shows that are sold out. Atlanta is sold out. New York is sold out. And Washington D.C. is sold out right now. I'm hitting 28 cities around the world, seven countries. Um, it's it's major. So check out cowgirl, uh, cowgirl tour dot eventbrite dot com, and you know grab a ticket because it's it's gonna be sold out before I even hit both cities. So I'm I'm excited to connect with all these women around the world, especially you, Debbie. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll put all your links below the video and blog post and radio show and all that stuff so people can just click and be able to find out where you are and if they're coming, if you're coming to their town and jump on board, literally. So yes. yeah, thank you so much, Tayomi. It's such a gift, honor and blessing to have you share with our amazing audience. And um, yeah, yeah, beautiful. I look forward to everyone following up with you. Yeah, same. Yeah, yay. Yeah. Yay, thank you everybody for joining us this evening and sharing this time and space with us. Uh, we hope that you, got some information about and some steps that you can take right now today to start connecting more fully with your body and your pleasure. Um, and I will see you next month for another amazing episode of Sex is Medicine with your hostess with the mostest, Davey Ward Erickson. <laughs>